Louise Quinn, good morning. How are you? Hi, Jamie. How's things? How are you? Not too bad. Thanks yourself. Yeah, yeah. Grant, pottering away. Anyway, working, trying to trying to get stuff done and stay productive and everything, but not doing too bad. So, where in the world are you, and how's lockdown where you are? Yeah, so I'm still over in uh, in you know up around London, um, you know by the training ground in London, and uh, yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been tough not to to be home during this time, but you know we've kind of we've we've stuck it out with the hope obviously there'd maybe be a, you know a bit of training and um but if not though our, you know our coaches have given us uh, plenty to do and there's still actually quite a few of the girls around so you know we're all we're all a bit in the same boat of just you know staying put and and hoping something you know would happen would happen sooner rather than later yeah and we've seen kind of across world football Louise lots of managers and players who are working in the country that they don't live in have been able to head home why have you decided to stay in London or were the club asking all the players to stay nearby? Um, in general, I suppose at the start, you know, they kind of advise that maybe it would be better to, you know, to stay close. And I, I suppose that was just in terms of, yeah, you know, it's it's pretty much going into a lockdown now. It's not that safe to travel. Um, just, you know, just all a bit of the unknown, I think, really. Um, yeah, so there were there were a couple of the girls that, that, uh, that decided to go home and, you know that was that was completely fine and that was something that they really felt that they that they had to do but yeah for me I just thought it was maybe a, a little bit better just to yeah to stay around here and to yeah I suppose just hope something was going to come back and and to and to get my training done as well so I suppose the family are you know they're obviously staying and they're staying on a you know a strict lockdown so you know, I suppose it, it gives me that li- at least that little bit of freedom to be able to go out, you know, into a random field and do a bit of training. But for them, just not to have to worry if I was popping, you know, popping in and out. So, um, yeah, it just kind of seemed a little bit more sensible to stay here. But, yeah, missing missing home uh, incredibly at the moment. Yeah, and I've been very interested over the last number of weeks speaking to a lot of footballers and football coaches about how they're trying to keep fit with runs and Zoom calls and home workouts. So what have yourself and the Arsenal girls been doing? I saw a cool video on your Twitter of you doing a, a hip mobility session yesterday as well. Yeah, so, yeah, Arsenal have been, you know, they've really given us, they've given us everything we need. Um, yeah, like, you know, set programmes, generally kind of keep... It'll be, it'll be quite different, but, yeah, they're, you know, they're still trying to keep in our body's kind of in that routine of training days um, you know but then also not like just not putting the pressure on us you know it's a it's a really really tough time and even some people in general maybe needed a bit more you know I, I suppose even rest as it was you know to kind of get their get their bodies right or you know it is it's a very very tough time we're all missing families we're missing home we're, we're missing each other and um, you know so again it's it's not that we're not under too much pressure to make sure that we get the sessions done, but you know we're just keeping in constant contact with them and you know kind of letting our letting our bodies and minds kind of do a bit of the talking as well. You know, in that way, if we're not maybe feeling up to a session, well then, yeah, maybe just take that day off and and just add it in somewhere else. And you know that's kind of it's been it's been nice to kind of have that bit of freedom. It it does feel a little bit like an off season where you can you know where you you have the control, which I think is sometimes. Uh, you know, really nice and different, and gives you that sort of fresh approach. So, I, like, I'm really enjoying it, and it's it's then net like you know, I'm really really missing football. I think, you know, I was able to not that I was able to do without it, but I was like, okay, this is something now. But you know, I'm now I'm just missing missing the pitch so much. Um, you know, it's it's tough for obviously being on some of these these parks, and I suppose avoiding all the the dog shit everywhere, and uh, you know, just trying to trying to find a good um a good patch of grass that you know that doesn't have too many pot you know little holes and stuff in it as well so it's been yeah listen it's been a challenge but you know we're we're thankfully you know happy and healthy and so you know if it's and, and it's the training that's really keeping that going as well yeah and it's something that you know there's been a big debate on sky sports and rt over here over the last little while about you know when the seasons might return if they will return and i know in the uk this week they announced that all of the underage academy seasons up to under 23 have been terminated for the year. Louise, you're a senior player. You've played lots of international games. You've played lots of games in Ireland, in Sweden, and in the UK. What's your opinion on if football can come back? And from Arsenal's point of view, you're in a league title race in your league over there, and I'm sure you want to try and get back if it's safe to do so. 
yeah exactly i think that's just the yeah the thing on everyone's mind you know if it's if it's safe to do so if it's feasible um you know but it is really just turning into as as time goes on they're really trying to condense these last few games into a into a small period of time and you know that's then really going to affect first of all like the, you know the next the next season but you know it's also going to affect um you know, but like our, ourselves as as athletes, you know, to kind of go jump into a season when when yeah we haven't we haven't even properly been able to get on a, a proper patch of grass really and and you know and, and kick a ball properly, um yeah so I think it's that's really kind of putting, you know, us as as athlete athletes in that kind of bit of a compromising position you know there's nothing more than you know we want to we want to keep going and keep going for that title race but you know if it's really going to compromise our health and you know, and the setup for what will hopefully be, you know, where we can get it kind of back on time, you know, later in the year, September, October, you know, I think that's kind of, you know, what we would prefer um, at this stage, because at the moment, you know, it's kind of like, oh, we'll find something out next week. Oh, we've got to wait another two weeks now. So hopefully we'll know something. And it's just, you know, it, it that's, I think that's kind of the most, the most draining bit. And yeah, I think it's just to, to make sure that everyone is just, is healthy and you know but at the same time yeah you'd love to see a, a bit of football back on but you know i don't think it should it should uh it should compromise people's health and from an international point of view louise as well the last game that you guys played was actually behind closed doors away to montenegro a 3-0 win and there's three more group matches left twice against germany and, and once against ukraine two of those three games are away from home and of course the euros has been moved to the summer of 2022 now as well. I'm sure you've been in touch with, with Vera Pair and your Irish teammates too. And uh, your, your thoughts on kind of having to wait to finish those group games and having to wait if Ireland qualify for their first ever major tournament for an extra year. Yeah, that was it. You know, we were we were really building something special and we were had gained so much momentum and, and just felt like we were in a in a great place. But yeah, listen, it's uh, it's not ideal, but sure, look, it gives us that more that bit more time to you know to to study the teams and have to wait you know it's it's one of those things where you know where you kind of see as well that obviously football is incredibly incredibly important but you know if if all we have to do is just wait a few more months or an extra year to you know to play to play football well then that's just what we'll do um you know and as long as everyone kind of comes out the other side feeling feeling good and up to it and, and ready to play that's kind of the most important um yeah, the most important thing, but obviously, yeah, it it kills that bit of that bit of momentum that we had. But I don't think it uh, it takes away that bit of passion and drive that we have. It just, you know, I feel like it's almost a little bit more can make you a little bit more determined. You know, if if we can still qualify for this tournament after going through all of this, well, you know, then we absolutely deserve our spot, and we've worked incredibly hard, not only on the pitch but then off it mentally as well to make sure that we, you know, that we're ready to go for those games. So. Uh, yeah, listen, it's it's a challenge and it's one that we definitely definitely won't forget. And yeah, I was just having a look through kind of your history with Ireland and from making your debut back in 2008, you played under four different managers and every campaign that Ireland have tried to qualify for hasn't worked out. And this one, certainly from my point of view as a journalist, and I've been at all the home games, it feels different. And, you know, the team is nine points clear of Greece in third and, you know, you're going to have to play Germany, who will likely win the group. But if you finish second, you'll either qualify automatically or definitely make a playoff. Does it really feel this campaign a bit different and that there really is something massively to play for here? Yeah, I just think it's been something that's been that's been building. And we've, you know, and we've talked about it in the past campaigns. You know, we're, we're unsure why it just hasn't uh, hasn't worked or hasn't clicked. Because, you know, even when we go into a campaign, we do, we, we feel good, we feel ready but I suppose it's sometimes one of those undescribables where you're not sure what's kind of making it do that but you know but then there's then there's the obvious reasons of people have upped their training and people have yet turned more professional and you know obviously the stance that we had against the FAI in terms of more investment in us has I think clearly shown and it has paid off that you know we knew what potential was there and so they needed to they needed to put that, you know, investment in us and trust in us that we could do it. And and so far we're, you know, we're showing that. And, you know, even as 
as much as it has, you know, we yeah, we had Colin for a certain amount of time, but I really think he he did shake the team into, you know, us becoming more professional and, and more serious about it and a winning mentality. And then, you know, now Vera being in, I think she's just she's really brought brought this uh like balance and calmness and she's so she's so clear in what she, in what she wants. Um and she's really, really simplified the game for us, you know, and and even for me, even still still going on now, you know. I'm learning so much from that to just to strip back, strip everything back. And, you know, it's, it's as simple as, you know, why would you play that pass when this one is actually can make a far more easier goal scoring opportunity. And then, she, you know, she's putting that trust in us. Yeah, maybe it is a little bit more of a difficult pass, but if you do it, we have a far better chance of scoring. And, you know, that's, that's it. And, and I think that's really, you, know, you can really see that in us that in terms of how we've now began to attack um, you know, a, a notoriously known for kind of being relative, like, you know, solid defensively, but, you know, not, you know, not taking those attacking chances. Whereas, and I think in, in every game now, we've, you know, we've attacked, we've attacked and it's really come good. And that's, that's the confidence that, uh, that yeah, that she's, that she's put on us and, and the trust and yeah, just that, that bit of, that bit of freedom. So it's, it's just, it's just worked out really well. Yeah, it's something that, you know, over the years, everybody has, you know, probably had a right at different times to criticise the FAI. At that time, you guys did as well. But since then, Louise, from a positive point of view, how have things changed for the Irish women's international team in a good way since you guys made that stance? I remember being at that press conference that day. And since then, things have changed. Yeah, just as I said, I think there's, you know, there's that bit more investment in the team. Um, There's that bit more, I suppose uh se- like security in the team as well for you know and at the, at the time there were you know a lot more kind of girls that were wor- trying to work and play and um, obviously now that's kind of taken off that that they've been able to come play abroad but I think they've both come hand in hand girls have wanted to come play abroad because they want to play like you know at, at the highest level in the national team and they want to they want to wear that green jersey even more because it seems like that there's yeah, that we're finally being taken a bit more, a bit more seriously, um, you know, by by the association and, you know, and 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 I think even just some regular contact with some of the, you know, the, the big bosses kind of in the FAI has even has even brought that on even further, being like, yeah, okay, you know, it's it's time to start recognising us and, you know, even having you know for them to come into camp even just for, you know, a bit of a chat, say like to say hello, even you know is a, uh, is. Is, is all these changes and then obviously on on personal levels yeah there's that bit more of of security of you know that they don't like you know that people don't have to take time off work to and then be able to put, to support themselves so we've got you know that little bit of of payment as well and I just think as well you know we've, we've brought in a fantastic coach they're investing in our coaches we have you know we we play on great pitches and um, you know, and you, even at that, even Tallah Stadium, every time the, uh, you know, the amount of effort that's going into that, the social media side of everything, you know, you can just see that it has, it has grown massively. Um, and so that's all just come hand in hand. And, you know, and I think it's just really coming to a forefront that, you know, those, those things make a difference um, and, and have, have helped us. Yeah, on, on and off the pitch, um, you know, but ultimately, I think, from my point of view, just seeing the effort that the, you know, that the that the girls put in and, um, has has just been incredible and you know everyone just wants to, be in first of all be in the squad but then be in that starting eleven and the competition is, is is something else as well and I think that's always, uh yeah important important for squads so, it's a, uh, it's been a lot of, a lot of elements of everything but it's it's all just coming together at the right time. Yeah, and I was having a look across, you know, the first five years of your Ireland career and there were home games in many different stadiums in Ireland. It was almost like a tour of the country. But since 2013, every women's national team match has been in Tallah Stadium and the pitch is probably the best in the country. The crowds have been improving and improving. And, you know, this campaign has shown that even more than, than any. And you mentioned, you know, the input of social media. And I love after the matches, Louise, the amount of time you guys spend with the young fans and not just young girls, young boys as well taking selfies, signing autographs with them and having that facility and talent to be able to do that. But most importantly, to play the football matches, the change rooms are fantastic, the meeting areas, I'm sure you can eat there afterwards and the pitch, that's been a massive help too, hasn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, down to the, the bit of investment that they've put in in Tallis Stadium and then and then the groundskeepers of Tallis Stadium. It's been it's it's fantastic. You know, the new the new stand that they've put in, it just adds that that element, you know, I think even more when you're when you're playing down into that goal with the new stand, you want to score in that goal even more now because, you know, that there's going to be a bunch of people behind there. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's just something that we enjoy so much is is you know is is going and, and seeing seeing the crowd and the fans afterwards um you know it really it genuinely brings us joy we come back on the bus and you know there's always a couple of little stories of you know of, you know incredibly cute families children and as you say boys girls men women um you know and again i just think in turn uh you know uh, how this 20 by 20 campaign has taken off at the at the exact right time as well where you know, without them, these big crowds wouldn't be there. Um, you know, and and putting putting us in, in the window as a uh, as role models has been has been so so important. And yeah, I think everyone's just got the yeah the you know is enjoying that feeling so much of of you know trying to trying to make that difference to you know to Irish women's women's football and and women's sport. So yeah, it's been you know it's just it's all coming together. Um, and it's just been it's been so enjoyable. How big, Louise, has the 2020 campaign been? And I know you're one of the ambassadors involved in it. And unfortunately, like everything else, it's had to be paused in terms of the actual sport itself. And I know the idea was to try and increase participation and attendances at women's sport in Ireland and probably, you know, further afield by 20% by the end of this year. How were things going up until the stop? And I'm sure when things do get back, everyone will be anxious to get that campaign properly moving again. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of obviously it's taken a bit of a, you know, a, a bit of a backseat in terms of you know of, of what you can see but you know how they're how they're pushing it on on the social media front you know has been brilliant and that's you know that's kind of one of the main platforms now that they that they want to push it on and trying to just keep people interacted and in touch and and I think again it has definitely been one of those things that have, have kept people uh yeah like in still involved still showing their skills still showing that you know, even no matter in, you know, this this hard time that, you know, us us athletes were, you know, we're still trying to do our best and to still train. And so, you know, to show that even you at home in your back garden, you can still you can still achieve achieve things, you can still achieve goals, you can still, you know, work on that left foot if it's if it's maybe something that you want to work on. And uh yeah, so I think it's it's just showing a completely different a completely different perspective of us and and exactly. So hopefully, then when things start to start to come back around, we can, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure the girls have stuff in the pipeline that's, you know, just going to as soon as we can start playing sports again, they're really gonna, uh, you know, put twenty by twenty back out there. But I still think it's doing an incredibly great job in in this in this time, and you know, and that's like the the work and effort that they're putting in, you know, on social media. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it every day. I'm getting tagged every day more than 20 times a day with some sort of you know 2020 uh hashtag or you know a cool video of skills and tricks and you know just showing what they're doing so it's still i think it's keeping people really motivated which is just the most important so Louise, we've spoken a bit about your ireland career from a club point of view you might just tell us a little bit about your path to arsenal which took you through the women's national league here with p mount some time in sweden with eskils tuna and you've been now with arsenal for a couple of years you're a league winner there as well and you're loving life in london yeah, it's just been it's been an absolute journey, is right, you know. So like uh, just almost ten years of P Mount, um, and yeah, and then just felt like the time was right for me to try to try get out and abroad, and for you know four years in Sweden, uh, incredibly different, um, yeah, playing in minus eighteen, uh, you know, degrees, and that was just yeah insane, frozen eyelashes, um, yeah, but that's that's the thing if you can kind of do training sessions and that push through that you know you just kind of feel like you're you know you're ready for everything and um yeah and it just got to a stage where I just thought it was time you know for me personally I wanted to be a bit closer to home and then you know at that time as well the the English league was really you know you could really see that it was growing and and uh going to develop into something so yeah you know so when I first tried to make my my time over here it was uh it was with Notts County unfortunately within the the couple of months of being there it went into liquidation but you know, for me, that was a real, um, yeah, it it was, 
you know, possibly one of the, the better things in terms that could happen to my career because then I got to sign for Arsenal, um, you know, right after that. And yeah, listen, it's just the this club has has that history and is and is just you know and and it lives up to it. Um, you know, I, I love playing for this club and and you know the the setup is incredible, the facilities are incredible. Um, you know, Joe Montemoro, our coach, he's he's just incredibly uh incredibly smart, wise, you know, he kn- he knows what he's on about and and then we just have so many talented uh, girls. You know, I'm literally playing with some of some of the best in the world. Um, you know, three Dutch players who have just made the just made the World Cup final, and um, yeah, so literally just playing playing and training with some of the best. And you know, if that doesn't keep you motivated to you know to want to work harder and train harder and you know compete with them on a regular basis, well, you know, yeah, I, yeah it's. It, w- it wouldn't be worth it then but it's just a yeah it's, it's just a, a great place to play your football and um yeah and you know and obviously winning that league title last year was just something extremely special for me 